Hello, welcome to the demonstration training corner. Today we will be talking about uh, and demonstrating the MP2, which is the measurement platform 2. Uh, this is located in our demonstration corner, which I usually do a quick little overview. Uh, this is the THWL1, so we have these instruments set up permanently for training and demonstrations. This is a THWL1 for running uh, liquids for thermal conductivity, diffusivity, and specific heat, uh, transient plane source for uh, running solids, paste, and powders. The popularity of these two units we combined to uh, develop the MP1. So that's the MP1 that combines both transient hot wire, transient plane source with a whole bunch of capabilities around temperature. And the black unit there is GHFM following ASTM E1530 for measuring complex structures. It's guarded. And the last one is the heat flow meter. Uh, this is for running insulation construction materials via ASTM C518 and the associated international standards. Today, we're going to talk about the MP2. This is a ground up development project for a portable unit that can also be plugged into the wall in the computer. It combines several primary sensors, transient in nature, for measuring solids, liquids, powders. So today we're going to talk a little bit about each one of them. The, each unit comes with a, a convenient box that lets you keep the, either the controller or the sensors safely packed away and tucked so that they last a long time. The three sensors that we're going to talk about today are asymmetric or single-sided transient plane source, transient hot wire for measuring liquids, uh, the transient plane source would be for measuring solids and powders. Transient hot wire, again, a primary method for measuring liquids. And transient line source, we'll show you how it's used, but that's for measuring soil, uh, as well as some additional types of sensors for measuring rocks. Following ASTM 5334, ASTM uh, 7896, a modified version because it does not have a Wheatstone bridge. That's what makes it modified. It follows all the same measurement principles as the classic transient plane source, which is uh, ISO 22007 2. That's the only difference. Uh, because we have a limited range of conductivity, we really don't need the, the uh, Wheatstone bridge because our sensitivity is quite good for measuring uh, solids on on this particular sensor. So a close-up of this sensor is it's a permanent asymmetric or single-sided configuration. If you were to cross-section this, you would see a metal housing. And underneath, you can see it is, uh, if I catch the light just so, you can see it's outdented a little bit. But that 12.8 that, uh, millimeter sensor is permanently placed on top of XPS. That XPS is big enough so that it, it all the different transient times that are available in this unit, which are 10, 20, and 40, stay within the dimensions uh, in the, uh, the insulated backside. That's, uh, again, any the transient plane source methods that we have that are lab scale can all be run in symmetric, two-sided, which is typical or standard, and asymmetric or single-sided. This is just a, a permanent single-sided sensor that's available on the TPS. Uh, or rather on the MP2. Thermal conductivity range is 0 0.03 to 5 watts per meter Kelvin. It can be used with sample on top or invert it with sensor on top of sample. So today, we'll do a demonstration on the measurement of Pyrex in this configuration, and we'll show you when it's inverted and measured on a bigger sample. This is just a big, uh, a big piece of Macor. We'll do both, uh, just single measurement each, and then we will uh, We'll switch to transient hot wire, show you a quick measurement on that, on fluids, and then use the little utility that comes with it that lets you download and export the results that are on the unit to the computer. And you can review data, look at the residuals, and look at the transients. Uh, so it's a pretty powerful unit. This unit, can you can also name, you can handle everything from the controller, but you can also schedule devices through the uh, utility application that's available. So I, I invite you, if you have interest in this, if you go to our website, these are only three of the sensors. There's at least three more additional sensors that are available, which are modifications of this. So the other sensors that are available are, this is a 100 millimeter needle. There is a 150 millimeter needle. And there's reasons for that. If you look at the specifications on it, there's a 50 millimeter needle for testing rock. Uh, there is a, 
a transient hot wire for solids, which is for measuring uh, homogeneous insulations. That's, that's a, a version of the transient hot wire. And then we have the asymmetric transient plane source. So let's set up. Oh, this is the uh, accessory that you can add to the transient plane source, or the TPS4 as we call it. This turns the unit into uh, a, a cell for testing pastes and powders. So this fits snugly on top. And if you could see, and I'll bring the camera over in a moment, you would put paste or powder in that. And if you wanted some pressure, you could put that weight down. And you end up with a small cavity. Let's see if I can bring it closer. You can see that there's a hole and that there's a depth. It's about one inch diameter by about one inch height. You're left with a cavity. And that's how we contain the sample. Pretty simple, pretty simple device. So let's put that aside. So we're going to measure. This is a Pyrex, uh, around half inch thick. You want to cover the sensor completely. So let me bring the camera in a little bit. So you want to cover the test area, which in this case is 12.8 millimeters. So it can be bigger. Uh, optimally, your sample size minimum is around 30 millimeters or bigger. We use a standard weight. I should say that this is absolute. So the, this, this particular sensors follow all the same, all the ideal theory for transient plane source. So it is not calibrated, it's absolute. And that's actually the same for all of these sensors. Transient hot wire is absolute. And the new version of the ASTM for the 100 millimeter sensor is absolute. ASTM uh, D5334-22 is absolute. So we can now say, because of all the changes in standards and the way we've designed this, that these are all absolute, meaning uh, from the output of the raw data, the thermal conductivity is calculated. So now that we have that set up, I'm going to share the screen on this. And after reviewing this on camera, I noticed that it's a little hard to see. So there's actually a setting we can go into, and we can turn it to dark mode, which I think will be a little bit better. So dark mode, we'll hit OK, then save that. So I think that's a little bit better, and I'll bring it closer so you can see the configuration. So now we've named it for Pyrex. So you can manually name this here by toggling up and down on the letters. And you can see that it recognizes the TPS sensor. And it's recording, all of these sensors record the environment temperatures. Generally, the TPS and the THWs that are available for this are good from 10 to 40 degrees Celsius as environment temperatures. The other units we have go from cryogenic up to three or 400 Celsius. So uh, this is a, a meant to be a portable, easy to use instrument with, uh, with, with you know, ranges that are more narrow. And uh, that, that really comes from the construction of the sensor. So now that we have the sensor input it, uh, there is two power settings. I'm gonna show what they are. So it is now on a high power setting that automatically changes the test time as well. So there are low, medium, and high. And generally for materials below 0.1 watt per meter Kelvin, you use low test time, low power, and that's a 40 second test. Medium is medium power and a 20 second test. And high power is high power and a 10 second test. So this measurement would be 10 seconds. So I'm gonna go back to the home. It, sorry about that. Uh, this can run off the reason that that is the panel, why don't I just take the opportunity to show you? This runs off batteries, which there's no batteries in it because it is connected to the computer because I'm going to download the data. So this can be, there's a little symbol there. This can be powered from the wall or batteries or run off either. And there's a little light that tells you it's on. So I'm going to go to the home screen and I'm going to put this down because I don't want to move the cable while it's measuring. So I'm going to put it down. It comes with this little cradle that keeps it sloped for easy to see. So I'm going to click the blue button to engage the measurement. So in, ad in advance of every measurement, and I'll just pull this back so you can see this is the sample setup and this is connected. The sensor is auto detected so it knows what's connected to it. It measures a 10 second drift. So what it's looking for at the sensor level is isothermal conditions. So once it's done that 10 seconds, you're looking for a nice random scatter on that with no trends. It applies power to the sample. Uh, and what you see there is not clipping. It's actually a scaling because the temperature rise is going out of the graph. But once that's done, we can review the data. And we can look at the, um, we can look at the, the, the auto scaled graph to see the transient. We can see that both on the controller and the desktop once we download the data. So still heating. 
And then once it's done, we can look at the thermal conductivity Pyrex, and then I'll invert the sensor for MACOR and rename it and make another measurement. Things always take a little longer while you're waiting. So that's the thermal conductivity of Pyrex. Uh, so we can, we've made other measurements. So let, why don't we take that sensor and invert it on Makor. So by moving the sensor to Makor and configuring it like that, we can change the name. So I'm just toggling this through you know, I, I won't take the time for this. Uh, we'll just leave it on Pyrex, but just so you know, when we download it, that will give a different result. So we should wait uh, a few moments to allow the heat we introduced in the back of the sensor to dissipate, but this is a demonstration. So we'll just make another measurement. You should wait five to 10 minutes between each measurement, but it's okay for demonstration. So you can see the data. So while that's working, I'm going to show you quickly the transient hot wire sensor. So the transient hot wire sensor, while that's working in the background, is a wire that's suspended between two contact points. We will insert this into, this is this test cell that comes with it. We'll fill this with uh, water, which is about 20 milliliters. And you can see how it's grooved, so it only goes in one way. That gives us a really good contact and containment of the sample and it holds about 20 milliliters. So we'll, that's what we'll show when this experiment is done. So we can set that up while we're waiting. So we'll put about 20 milliliters into this. I'll use this hand. So I'm just filling it to the point where it, where it's full. And we'll insert the sensor. So I'm going to I'm going to plug it into the unit before I insert it. But, so I'll just wait for that measurement to be complete. So there's the thermal conductivity of Makor, 1.56. So it's a Makor ceramic. And again, we have a several several uh, measurements on there that we can download later. So I'm going to unplug this. There's a little Limo connector that has the identity of the sensor connected. We'll disconnect that. I'll just move that to the side and no sensor detected. So once we plug in the transient hot wire, it will auto recognize what it is. So now we've reset the ID because obviously it's not the same sample anymore. And now we have THW L3 and the current temperature. So I'm gonna put this back and we're going to, we've already poured water into that. I'm gonna insert the sensor now we should let this sit for a bit. You know, if you're doing good measurements, you would let everything you touch stabilize. But I think demonstration-wise, we're okay. I would normally change the sample ID to water, but for now, uh, again, the easiest way to do this is through the computer. You don't have to toggle up through the letters, but it's okay for now. So we're gonna go, and there's two steps, which is we use the intelligence of the unit to be able to increase accuracy. You can, uh, set the current automatically by, so you can, you can let it detect what fluid is there and it'll automatically adjust the power to, uh, in the thermal conductivity range of this for the transient hot wire, 0 0.01 to one watt per meter Kelvin. So there's a step there that you can run that will send a, a quick measurement and determine from that measurement what the optimum adjustment of power to achieve the minimum temperature rises. We've already run that step. So here we can just, I'm gonna lean this up so you can see it. So here we can go to home and we can make a measurement. Again, it's gonna do the 10 seconds of stabilization. I really should have this down, but I think it's okay, just for demonstration. So there's the conductivity of water, 0 0.596. And at this point, we've measured our materials. So I'm gonna go and switch the screen to the, to the rather the video to the, to the
the screen. And you can see this is the software that comes with every controller. And it lets you select the MP2, Thermtest MP2, and click OK. And it will download all the data you've generated. And you, this will store it to 1,000 measurements. Here we can see we ran five measurements on water. You can see the repeatability. We did five measurements on Maycore. You could see the uh, thermal conductivity. If we click in any one of them, we can see the, some of the more fine details, the test time. You can see the transient rise versus time, as well as the graph. We can also delete. We can also run a, if I wanted to run a schedule from here, uh, this is where I was referring to that we could set up a schedule. It's THWL3. Let's say I wanted a 10 minute delay with a test town of 10, 10. I would activate that schedule and it'll say this will take approximately 1.4 hours with five measurements with a 10 delay. And then that is sent to the unit and it'll start that schedule. So essentially that is the full, uh, full description of how these units work. Of course, there's, there's variables to these if depending on which sensor you're using, but the, the platform component allows you to learn and use various primary sensors. And that was really our goal when we designed this was to allow um, use of proper sensors for different applications. There's transient line source should be used for solid like materials, not liquids. Transient hot wires for, for liquids and fluids, and transient plane source for solids from a surface measurement. And that was the goal, to make good measurements. If there's any questions, uh, I'll, I'll stay in line for a while. Also, we'll monitor the chat if there's any questions over the next little while. And I realized the last sensor I didn't show you was the transient line source. So this is the needle following ASTM D5334 and we have different lengths of it. So for setup of this sample, again, if you plugged it in, it would auto, auto recognize it on the device. So this would be maybe some sand as an example. You would insert the needle. And as long as that needle is completely covered and that needle is 100 millimeters, you're ready to test. Of course, that should be sitting stable, not moving. You wouldn't hold it like this, but that's, that's the, the, the basic setup. So that's the demonstration. If you have any questions, please get in touch with us. I do see a question online. It says, if we connect 100 millimeter, can we get results of thermal conductivity and resistivity on the display? Yes, it, it, the unit automatically measures conductivity. And if you toggle through, uh, if you toggle through on the device, it shows resistivity as well. So resistivity is just one over conductivity. It does, it does give you those units. As well as in the software, you, you can make that, uh, when you download it, you can see that in Excel. All right. Thanks, everybody, for, for listening in.